10 social media myths that are hurting your business. 10 social media myths. These are myths, not based on reality, I would say, not truth, that are hurting, hurting your business. These are not my words. These are not my words. These are from Angie Gensler. And we're going to talk about these myths um, because I actually think they're really, really cool. Um, not necessarily about the the exact myths, but what was covered. Because when you look at the all these 10 myths, these are like questions that if you work in social media or digital marketing, you probably get it a whole, whole lot of times. And if you have a business and you're looking to go into digital marketing or social market, social media marketing, these are probably the questions that you will have to ask. So I think it's really cool. And we're going to talk about these myths. Now, if you are not, if you can't see this and you're listening to it, I'm just going to spill through these myths real, real quick. And myth one is social media is free. And the truth is on myth one is social media costs a lot of time. Okay. Myth two, you must be on every platform. Truth two, be where your ideal customer is. Myth three, post unique content on each platform. Truth three, cross-posting content is smart marketing. So the truths are counters to the myths, if you've not figured that out yet. But you can see it over here as well. Social networks are broadcast channels. That's myth four. And the truth with that is social networks are interactive channels. Interesting. Myth five, you have to post multiple times a day. Truth five is you need to post consistently. Interesting. <laughs> Myth six, your images have to be perfect. And the truth six is no, your images should be authentic. Myth seven, you must have cohesive. You must have a cohesive aesthetic. And truth seven is honor your brand standard. In counter to that. Myth eight is share lots of portraits and selfies. In counter to that is truth eight, which says images without people get great results. Myth nine, scheduling tools hurt post performance. Truth nine, scheduling tools save time and insanity. We don't even need to go through all this for me to raise up my hand with myth nine and truth nine. Even if you don't hear this, take that one away. <laughs> It does save a lot, of, a lot of insanity, makes you sane. Myth 10, you must create videos to get great results. And the truth 10 is the content you enjoy creating gets results. Again, these are not my words. I found this on social media today, and this was written by Angie Gensler. I don't know who that is, but very good put together, whether you agree or don't agree with her. But before we start, welcome to the Digital Marketing Pulse podcast with Dr. Mayo, where I talk about digital marketing stuff, social media marketing, things that are going on out there in the digital marketing space to enhance you, your enhance your career, enhance your digital marketing. And without further ado, we will just go straight into this because I think this is really, really cool. Again, why do I think it's cool? It covers a whole lot. These are true myths. These are things that, you know, linger behind people's heads, you know, when they're thinking about social media marketing. Right. So we're going to go to the first myth, which is social media is free. And the truth that counters that says social media costs a lot of time. And wow, that's quite reasonable. But I would say what happens is actually social media costs resources whether it's time or money, which neither are free, right? None of them are free. So it's either you are there posting and creating your content, which is taking time from you focusing on other stuff in your business, or you are paying somebody to do that, which then means you can focus on your business while an assistant or somebody else is helping you with your social media. There's no escaping it. So I won't say just time. The fact of the matter is social media costs resources right from when you pick up your phone. Because, I mean, is your phone free? I mean, the data on your phone, is it free that you're using? I mean, what's the illusion here <laughs> that anything is free? You know, your phone is not certainly not free. You pay for your phone. You pay for the data on your phone, even if you don't pay for the apps on it. 
starting from there. So it's about resources, people. It's about resources. And you can't cheat the system. It can't be cheated. You have to... You have to expend resources. You just have to expend resources in some sort of way. So I would say that that truth is not that social media costs a lot of time. It costs resources because if I don't have the time to do it, I can pay somebody else to do it. Myth two, you must be on every platform. And the counter to that truth too is be where your ideal customer is. Well, my question is, where's your ideal customer? Do you know where your ideal customer is in the first instance? Where is your ideal customer? Have you checked where your ideal customer is, especially in this digital world where how many people are online at the same time? Aren't those your ideal customers? Be where your ideal customer is. Is that actually a counter to that? You must be on every platform. Well, can you be on every platform? That's another question to ask. I say, be on as many platforms that you can be as much as possible. You get me? Be on as many platforms. I have a client that only goes to Twitter, period. No other social media platform. No other social media platform. Well, I'm sure the guy eats, drinks, buys stuff, shops, has interests. Who's saying he's not an ideal customer of somebody else? But if you're not on Twitter, you might never get that guy. And he might be your ideal customer, but now you're not on Twitter. Right? Now you're not on Twitter. So I guess it does say it, be where ideal. How then do you know? And when you can't even say, like, I know my ideal customer is going to be on Facebook or on Twitter or on LinkedIn... What really behooves you to do is to spread your tentacles as much as possible and be in as many platforms as much as possible. So if somebody just accesses TikTok all the time and they don't even go to Facebook, they should be able to see my content if they're my ideal customer. So I would say be on as many platforms as much as possible. You probably can't be on all of them when you think about it. Or maybe you can. If you can, kudos to you because you will. The truth of the matter is you will reach as many, you will reach more people. It's like back in the day, if somebody came to you and said, hey, we have the yellow pages, the blue pages, white pages, and for the same cost, you can be in all three, or would you rather be in one? I mean, would you say just be in one? No, you want to be in all three. Why? Because logic tells you that all those three different ones might hit different target markets. And in the digital world, knowing again where your ideal customer ideal customer is, that's a challenge in many instances, especially for people that are not especially skilled with it. Okay, next one is post unique content on each platform. And cross, the, the truth to that is cross-posting content is smart marketing. Yeah, I totally, totally agree because... You actually don't know what's going to germinate in many instances. Now, you don't know what I'm saying when I say germinate. In this instance, when you're cross-posting, when you're posting, you're planting. You're putting stuff out there. You're planting. And in many instances, you don't know what the reaction is going to be. Your job is just to plant. Your job is just to post with sense, common sense, consistently. And you just never know. I'll tell you why. We have videos that are huge on YouTube on YouTube shorts and are not doing great on reels or Instagram. We have videos that are huge on TikTok, 80,000 views, 100,000 views. And that's not the same on, on, on Facebook reels. So if I'm cross, if I'm not cross posting, you think we will get all that because every channel treats your content differently based on so many dynamics that are happening that you don't even know about. So, yes, cross-posting content is smart marketing. As a matter of fact, if you're not cross-posting content, you're wasting your content. You think about it. You have content you could go on four or five channels and you just posted it on two content you've taken time to create. You're wasting content. You're doing you. (laughs) Should be doing them. You know. So, cross-posting content, it is smart marketing. It is rewarding. Not just smart. It's actually rewarding marketing. It's optimized. Marketing. Okay, number four, social networks or broadcast channels. 
And the truth is, social networks are interactive channels. It's kind of both. It's kind of both. I mean, why are you on social media anyway to broadcast? Especially if it's your business, you are broadcasting. And I agree because, I mean, apart from maybe you're the QVC channel, I mean, the channel where you order stuff online, I mean, <laughs> that you're interacting because you think about it, a TV is a broadcast channel. But in some instances, it could be interactive because American Idol, they're broadcasting and they'll tell you to go vote live or the voice or all these competitions that they hold online. So they are broadcast channels and they turn into interactive channels. I guess it goes to what your strategy is. And it is true to a certain extent, it's interactive because more interactive because when people post, you can directly interact with them, but not to be lost on you that it's not a broadcast channel. It is. It's actually your network. I keep on saying that, that social media is your network. That is your network. That is your broadcast network. How else do people know what you're doing? You're whispering it, sending birds in the air? I don't think so. Are you calling everybody up to just tell them, hey, this is what's going on. Hey, this is what's going on. Hey, this is what's going on. I don't think so. You're broadcasting. Social media, you go there and you broadcast. Whether it's personal or a business, that's how people could tell, hey, you know, I saw you on Facebook last week doing this because you broadcasted. So it's a, it's a combination of both. It's a broadcast channel, and it's also an interactive channel, more so than other media, I would say. Okay, you have to post multiple times a day. You need to post consistently. This is so funny because... This is one of the bigger questions that you always get. How many times should I post? How many times should I post a day? You have to post multiple times a day. Uh, is the myth you need to post consistently. It just depends on what your business is. So you think about it. If you go on a feed like a, 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 a news feed on, on, on social media, maybe it would be face, um, uh, CNN or Fox, you'll see that consistently every hour. Every hour, there's a lot of stuff going on. That's based on their strategy. They're a, pub, they're a media company. So they could say they are posting consistently, right? A small business, on the other hand, might just be posting three, four times a week. That might mean consistently, and that might not mean multiple times a day. So I guess it really depends on what your strategy really, really is and what you are doing, the dynamics of your company. Because does your, does your dynamics of your company require you posting consistently every day, multiple times a day? It might. Does an event that's coming on require you to post consistently multiple times a day? It might. It still does under fall under the window, though, that you do need to post consistently. Either which way, whether it's myth or truth, it's saying it's the, there's a multiplication there. It's not a one. It's not a one time thing. It's a consistent thing. All right, let's go to image. I mean, sorry, um, myth six, which has to do with images. Your images have to be perfect. No, your images should be authentic. What do you think? What's a perfect image? <laughs> What's a perfect image? What's an authentic image? I say we all have the knack and discernment for beauty. We all have the knack and discernment to go, you know, that's a little off. I've done many classes where we train on creating content. And the person creating the content can easily tell you, no, this isn't done yet. I, no, this is this doesn't feel good yet. And there's some that they do it and they go, I just can't wait to post it. Like, oh my God, like, are we done yet? I'm ready to post it. Whether perfect, whether authentic, right? Your images just have to be good, man. Your images just have to be good. You have to assess. You have to go behind the camera. After you've taken that picture, you have to remove yourself and now go into the objective state and not fall in the time you've spent in creating the image and step back and go, if somebody just scroll down will they, and they see this, will this catch their attention? Will this drive the point home? Will it, though? You know, will it though? Because in between the perfection and authenticity, there's the winning. I mean, your images should be a winning image is what I should say. You should be just posting an image. Things that win, things that are captivating, things that people see and go, whoa, that's really, really cool. And whether that's authentic or perfect, I don't know. I'm just saying you're appealing. You should post appealing images. That's what I would say. Don't take my word for it though. Take your visions, your visuals for it. When you see something that captivates you, 
you know. Now, myth number seven, you must have a cohesive aesthetic. And number seven is honor your brand standard. And I totally, totally agree. Actually, the cohesive aesthetic um, could, could, could get you in trouble. You, at times, go to somebody's Instagram and they have the, these templates that they've created and they look so good. But then the whole Instagram looks like the template. I'm almost trying to figure out the person because I figured out the template. <laughs> it's like, I can't figure out the person. All I know is about the template. I know more about the template than you. And so honor your brand standard is really cool because you're sticking to like your logo. You're sticking to your brand message. You're sticking to your co uh, company colors in strategic ways, the tints and the fades. If your logo is blue, it has blue and red, the tints on the picture are blue and they're red at times, you know, like, and it's dynamic. It's dynamic. It's not boring because a cohesive aesthetic after a while, at, at, at first instance, it's like, whoa, that's really cool. But a year's time, you're still doing that. Um, Not brand standardly at that point, you know, like you're actually losing your brand because you've stuck to a cohesive aesthetic that has worked and you've not evolved from it. So that's totally true. Honor your brand standards. Stick with what is like falls within your brand logo, you know, and all that stuff. Like, I totally, totally agree with that. Okay, number eight, myth eight, share lots of portraits and selfies and images without people, which is the truth to this is images without people get great results. That's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely true. This goes back to just the image that goes back to the number six is what I should say. Your images have to be perfect. Your images should be, be authentic. No. Good. You should be able to see it, step back, look at it with the side angle. You know what? This works, man. I can, I can stand behind this. You know, this works. You know, if you went and you went to take a family portrait and they gave you 15 pictures easily, you'll pick out the ones that you know you want to be on the wall in the house. You'd be like, no, I don't want this easily. I mean, you know, where you guys are deliberating, go, you know, no, 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 this one. Right? So it's the, that, the, those are the images that are getting results. <laughs> That's why you want to put it on the wall. You know, so you, your honest assessment will give you the right images. Okay, number nine, scheduling tools hurt post performance, which is a myth. Uh, scheduling tools save time and insanity, which is the truth. And that's absolutely the truth. I've heard people say, Oh, I've heard that if they see Hootsuite, back in the day, Hootsuite would show that this is posted from Hootsuite. I don't know if it still does that and that, that it hurts your, and that might have been the case, but there was just no other efficient way when you're running many accounts for many businesses that you're just going to go on each channel and post. There's just, it's just not possible. It's just not possible. And in all honesty and in all fairness, I did not see any reduction in optimization because the content was good. It was just the content that people wanted to see. So it's so smart that you use a scheduling tool like Hootsuite, you know, these things that you could schedule, they go to multiple channels and that you can schedule over a long period of time. And what's also cool is all these platforms, now whether it's Facebook, uh, Instagram, they now have the opportunity for you to schedule your posts ahead of time, not like back in the day where you just couldn't. Excuse me. So, yeah, scheduling tools save time and sanity, and they make you so, 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 so efficient. You know, they make you so efficient. So keep on saying if you do not use any of these, I highly encourage you to, to, to use them so that, again, when we go to uh, um, item two here, you must be on every platform. Item number nine makes that very easy for you. A one-stop shop step, sorry, one-step item that just goes to all these channels at the same time. And all done. As supposed to go into one channel, post. Second channel, post. Third channel, you'll lose it. Like, you go crazy, man. And that's true. The sanity is a big word here. Big word. Next thing is you must create videos to get results. And then the next thing is the content you enjoy creating gets results. Well, I will tell you, and many people will tell you, that videos get high engagement, high results. You know, if you're going to do it 
if you're going to do anything at all, you might as well do it well. And that's what I'm going to say. Videos and social media are like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> you know, very symbiotic in nature, man. I had a client once tell me that they wanted to do videos. And I asked why he goes, because when I'm looking at stuff, I don't read. I just want to look at the video. So I had to step back and look at myself and go, if I, if all I want to do is read videos, why am I creating content that does not have videos? And that's true. The stats on videos are just so huge, man. The stats on videos are huge and you could always check it out. I mean, if you went here, video marketing, uh, stat trends, 2023 and statistics, you will be you will be blown away. Um, you will be blown away at how um, video marketing trends um, or how video marketing is just huge. So if the content you enjoy creating. Um, the content you enjoy creating gets results, if the content you enjoy creating doesn't get results i i highly encourage you to incorporate video into your strategy bet because videos i mean you could go look at the stats videos engage more engage more i'll actually tell you since we started focusing more on uh reels on facebook our engagement engagement views impressions all gone up so are you gonna come and tell me now like hey you know oh you don't like doing videos Okay, well, just keep posting pictures. I guess that's what you got to do. But this that says you must create videos to get results, well, that's true. You might not need to create videos to get results, but most probably when you incorporate videos, you will get better results. Yes, you will get most likely better results. There's just something about the video. It's more engaging. There's communication going on. It's live motion picture. People tend to get it more. You're compressing that information. Yeah. So there it is, though. I think it's really, really cool. Shout out to Angie Gensler. These are like the questions that we mostly get. And I, I think it's really cool that it's condensed in here in this format. So if you are uh, thinking about doing social media marketing or you are currently doing social media marketing, I hope this was helpful. And I hope these are like some of the things that you could start to look at and consider uh, whether you should or should not do. But again, most importantly is what works for you. This is based on Angie Gensler's experience. This is what works for her. Based on my experience, I've told you what works for me. Well, uniquely though, there's gotta be something that works for you. There's gotta be some strategies and things that work for you. And the only way you can really, really get to that is to just be consistent with posting content. That's the main tip here is just be consistent with posting content because two things will happen. You'll get better and your interactions and your engagements will go up and you will get results. You will get results. So that's just the main, uh, the main thing is continue posting. Um, and as you do, the questions that come your way, the uh, dynamics that come your way will begin to shape your strategy on what you should be doing, you know? If, you, if, you, if you're now on YouTube and now you can see your analytics that at 3 p.m. on Wednesdays, that's when you have the most people logging in to, to, to check your content out or on Instagram, 5 p.m., you know? That's because you've posted a lot of content and the algorithm has been able to show you that. And now you can start to define your strategy more. So again, what is unique to you? What is unique to you? I hope this was helpful. And if it is, like our page, I like this video, sorry, and subscribe to our page so you can continue continue to great 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 content. Sorry, it was my words not at the last minute. <laughs> so you can continue to get great content that'll make your life easier. Hope this was helpful again. Take care. Till next time.